So consider this sphere. So we have a sphere and you consider a point on the sphere. So at this point, so from the center you're going here, at this point you can draw a tangent plane. So let us draw a tangent plane at this point. And this tangent plane precisely consists of vectors which are perpendicular to the position vector here. So this was a position vector and you have these bunch of vectors v which span the tangent plane and they are perpendicular to the position vector which was position of the point on the sphere. So what have we done? We have taken a point on the sphere and to it we, we have attached a tangent plane. So this tangent plane is nothing but R2. So it is just displaced by some angle. So this is just a displaced plane and it is attached to every point. And as you move the point, the plane moves with it. So some kind of a smooth movement. And this is the motivation for a vector bundle. To every point, we are attaching some space to it. So vector bundle is a triple. So that is it contains three things. E, P and B. E is called the total space. B is called the base space. And then P is a projection map from E to B. So this is a continuous surjective map. So here you can see that this point is on the sphere. So you could have a continuous surjective map back to your sphere. This point was taken on the sphere. This is right this point. And for each B in the base space, P inverse of B, you define it as E of P. This has a real vector space structure, which is called a fiber. So let us draw this and uh, that will make things uh, more clear. So say you have something like this. This is your base space. Let us call this B. Now to every point, I'm attaching a vector space. So obviously there are uncountable many points in this base space which I have drawn. So all these things are vector spaces. So these are vector spaces. So a B is a topological space and E is the total space. So this E contains B as well as these attached vector spaces. So this is a way to uh, picture a vector bundle and say each of these lines is a fiber. So for an open set, we have a homeomorphism. Uh, you also call it local trivialization, taking P inverse of U to U times Rn. So here, this Rn is just R. So say this, uh, our space E is B times R. So this is how it will look like. So for any open set, you have U times Rn. And for every fiber also, you have P inverse of B. H of B is B times Rn. So let us uh, draw this also in a figure. So say you have this base space again, but I'm going to draw an open set of the base space. So, so you have this base space, but we are drawing a neighborhood now. So say this is point X. So this is a neighborhood U of a point in the base space. So P inverse of U. So say P inverse of U looks like something like this. So this is P inverse of U. And uh, let us draw this curve in it again. So this curve is drawn like this. This point X comes like this. So let us first focus on this map and say this map gets mapped to U times Rn. Again, this curve 
looks something like this here. So you have this homeomorphism right here. Okay, so this is the point X, but at every point you also have this fiber. So let us draw this fiber in different color. So at this point you have this fiber. So this fiber here will get mapped to this particular fiber here. So that is what these two mean. Conditions. So you have for open sets also and you have for every point also. So let us do some examples now. So the first example is of the trivial bundle. So you have take the base space multiply by R and have the natural projection on the first factor. And uh, this will be a trivial bundle. I mean a standard example is you take a take a circle S1 as the base space and then you just put lines on it at every point. So for R you have just this lines at every point. So this is standard you know you can instead of S1 you can write anything and instead of R you can write R and and when you project it you just do the natural projection you don't project this part so projection forgets this part forgets that this exists so this uh, the second uh, standard uh, bundle is rpn so you identify the antipodal points and you have a natural bundle structure you know rpn uh, times r to rpn you know that uh, so for rp2 x0 x1 and x2 this is same as if you multiply by some constant lambda so lambda times x0 x1 x2 so this uh, uh, this lambda could be any constant in real numbers so that is why you uh, take r here so x comma lambda going to x going to the first factor so the third one we talk about is the mobius bundle so for the mobius bundle we have the interval 0 to 1 so in this interval first you put uh, real numbers onto it so this is the real numbers we are putting so this interval goes from 0 to 1 and uh, we have this now say below the line is negative part of real numbers above the line is positive part of the real numbers I'm just going to shade the negative part of the real numbers in red and we are going to identify this point that is this point with this point so you identify 0 comma t with 1 comma minus t and what we get is a Mobius so let us draw the Mobius so this is the Mobius and uh, now we are going to draw the draw the yellow part just top part and now we draw the red part yeah so basically you see this red part in the end is joining the yellow part on the top so these two are combining together so red joins the yellow on the top so this is how the Mobius band looks like so we are given three examples in the next lecture we will cover more examples